Hi, everyone, and good to be here with you. Uh, for those of you I don't know, Fiona Shanley, Chief Customer and Marketing Officer here at Travelport. Welcome to Venice. Welcome to Travelport Live. Hope you've been enjoying the content so far. Um, as introduced, this segment really is about talking about some of the consumer and traveler insight that we've developed at Travelport that we wanted to share with, with you today. I think you've heard um, this morning some of the opportunities that come from the experience economy, opportunities that all of us in this industry can really take advantage of. Um, and as a B2B for C company, Travelport is in the business of selling experiences. I think all of us in this room together are in the business of exciting our customers, allowing our customers to see uh, new things, experience new uh, destinations, new cultures, uh, create new memories. That's special. We're in an industry that's very special, but with that um, uh, specialness comes a job that's really quite uh, difficult for us to do. Travel's an emotional experience. It's something which is, um, when, something, when things go right, the memories are amazing, but it just takes one part of that experience, that journey, to go wrong for a customer for a traveler to tell us that um, they may not book again, they may not travel again. So we have a big um, responsibility to really ensure that what we do as an industry really moves um, the market along and delights our customers at every opportunity. Together, we have an accountability and a responsibility to do this. At Travelport, we see our role as delivering um, as delivering technology that makes the experience of buying and managing travel continually better. The only way we can achieve this is to understand what our travelers really want. And at Travelport, we spend a lot of time really digging into market trends, traveler trends, customer insights. And one of the ways that we do that is through our global traveler research study, which is now in its third year. It's an independent study led by our market intelligence team and executed by a leading research firm, firm called uh, Toluna. We researched 23,000 uh, travelers across 20 countries, so quite a large scale study that gives us pretty robust insight into trends and the needs um, of the traveler. We categorize travelers as those who've done two return flights or more per year, and in Europe, I'll talk through the results of the European study today. In Europe, we focus in on six countries, um, Italy, uh, Spain, France, Germany, Russia, and the UK. And across each of these countries, we have a sample of at least 1,000 uh, travelers that we, um, that we get insight from. I'll talk to the results of the survey um, over the course of the next uh, 20 minutes or so. to um, give us richness of insight and really kind of some, some takeaways that are actionable for all of us. We break down the research into different age groups. And um, I'll just kind of recap in terms of what those age groups are and the kinds of um, the methodology that we take. So to remind in terms of the generations, and we've heard some references already today to, um, to Gen X, Gen Y, et cetera. So to, to ground in this, Starting with baby boomers, the original generation, the post-war children, and probably the first generation that really started to travel en masse. Often beach holidays, uh, but very much kind of the, the first generation that had the joy of global travel. Hopefully that's better. Um, Gen X, next up, um, that's probably many of us here in, this, uh, here in this room, born between the 60s and the 80s, um, latchkey kids, MTV generation, and um, probably also known as quite the materialistic uh, generation among the set of generations that we, that we have up here. Gen Y, um, aged between 20 and 39, born from the early 80s to 2000, very much kind of the first tech generation started with the introduction of the Walkman in the 80s and goes up to those born at the point in time when Google was, um, was being born. These, uh, this generation very much lives their life online, um, digital uh, natives. And then Gen Z, um, small cohort, but uh, important for us to really understand behavioral differences within this group. 
Gen Z, 18, 19 year olds, didn't go younger than that though, of course, we all know that sometimes it's the young people in our families who influence many of our travel decisions. So that's the approach that we took um, and the spread of, um, of um, insight and input that we, that we took. Um, the results of the travel um, survey this year really have uncovered four key trends. The first of these trends is um, that value is more important than cost, but it's not always easy to find. So let's dive a little uh, more deeply um, into the findings around this theme. Um, when researching flight options, it won't surprise, of course, to hear that nearly all travelers in Europe are focused on looking uh, for value. Uh, value, of course, means different things to different people. Our definition, how we think about it, is that it's the desired, desired experience um, met at a desired cost. Really, that sweet spot that makes us look, that, that we all look for when we're making a purchase. All age groups in Europe place value as a top priority. Um, there are studies suggest that it's marginally more important for the baby boomer uh, population. At a regional level, uh, it's considered more of a priority in Europe than it is in APAC, in the Middle East, uh, or in Africa, marginally less of a priority than it is in the Americas. Today, however, one quarter of travelers in Europe also um, book solely on cost, um, cost being the primary driver of um, their buying decision. That's more than in other regions, um, and it also, um, uh, from a Gen Y perspective, more um, price consciousness from that Gen Y population, le less uh, price consciousness from that Gen Y population, as I think we've heard in, uh, from the last speakers, experience indeed is everything to that population. So willing to do a second job, willing to sell some of their possessions in order to get an experience, and that certainly kind of comes through strongly in the research here as well. Let's start by looking at how the travelers in Europe are searching for value. Um, again, not a major surprise here. Review sites, price comparison sites feature strongly. 39-37% um, of, um, of uh, respondents searching through review sites like TripAdvisor or price comparison sites like Kayak. They're widely used across all groups, though younger generations, as you'd expect, uh, use them more frequently than, um, than older groups. Um, popularity of online channels, however, doesn't mean that there aren't pain points with that search. Frustrations do exist, and uh, indeed, some of the frustration levels are, in fact, um, growing. Uh, when it comes to um, shopping online, um, for travel online, two of the most significant pain points for travelers in Europe came through as really a theme around trust um, and not knowing which companies one can trust. Another theme around not knowing if online uh, travel reviews are in fact genuine or are uh, promoted by the travel provider. Um, nearly half of all travelers share these frustrations, so that's significant. Um, and another interesting theme here is that frustrations are in fact growing. That theme of uh, questions over trust, questions over transparency, um, are in fact going up um, over the course of the last three years that we've been doing this study. You can imagine that frustrations, those particular frustrations, do peak among the older, less tech-savvy generations, um, but that's actually not the case, and that's not what we saw in our research. Uh, frustration is in fact higher with Gen Z and Gen Y populations, so an interesting thing for us to um, have sight of and an interesting thing for us to try and address. I think there's another trend here underlying this, which is that across Europe, um, trust often starts from a pretty low base. Now, when we look at some sources, and uh, for, for example, Edelman's trust barometer, we see that largely consumers in Europe are mistrusting, mistrusting of businesses, mistrusting of governments. Um, and while technology is the most trusted sector out there, um, it is this lack of trust and um, real need for transparency is something that in the travel industry we all need to think about and do our um, utmost to address. Of course, it's not just online channels that um, travelers in Europe look to. 
to find value to book that next trip. One quarter of uh, travelers that we surveyed almost always seek recommendations and use travel professionals, travel agents, like um, many of you in the room. This figure has remained the same since 2017, so no, no movement uh, upwards or downwards, which is interesting. Um, and I think another further really interesting fact here is it's not just older generations that are responding that they value the use of the travel agent. Um, it's, uh, in fact, those younger generations, the in Instagram generation, that is um, using um, travel agents, and you see the stats here, 28% of Gen Y respondents said that in the last 12 months they have used the services of a travel agent to help them with, uh, with a trip. Um, when we look more globally at some of the data underpinning travel agent um, uh, usage and kind of booking trends under this, we see that across other geographies that same um, kind of uh, insight is revealed that those younger generations enlisted the support of a travel professional in many geographies actually more, uh, more commonly uh, than older uh, generations such as baby boomers. Trend number two, moving on, and I, I think kind of much was said about this, uh, the value, the power of personalization in Jonathan's session uh, a little earlier. Um, trend around um, the desire to personalize your experience, um, but personalization with more transparency and a good level of control for the traveler underpinning that. So let's look at uh, this in a little bit uh, more detail. I guess, you know, a lot of debate in our industry and in many others around if and how personalization um, is really kind of desired by consumers. According to our study across all um, age groups, when booking a flight, travelers typically want to personalize their own experience with add-ons, 45% um, of respondents, so add-ons like extra legroom, baggage allowance, meals, etc. Demand is particularly high among Gen Y travelers who want to craft their own unique experience for, for themselves. And um, so this theme of self-service personalization um, is a strong one, and it's a stronger one, in fact, that in Europe than came through from other regions that we, that we surveyed. One fifth, however, prefer a, a basic level of personalization through branded fares. Um, this is, um, I think, an interesting, um, an interesting trend and really kind of shows us that products like rich content and branding, branded fares, are important for us to deliver to our customers and to enable them transparently um, and with a good level of control um, to, um, to craft the trip that they want. Um, this isn't just about ticking boxes in terms of delivering personalization. It's about putting control in the hands of the travelers, allowing them to construct the experience, a trip that's right for them, um, a trip uh, molded um, for them, in, in, by them, and that will, that will meet, best meet their needs. Um, <clears throat> in addition to more control, um, travelers also want more transparency. So more than half of travelers in Europe today say that they're often left frustrated by not um, understanding what's included as standard um, and also not understanding what add-ons uh, are available to them and at what price. Frustration growing in this space, so I think um, something for us to think about in terms of that transparent experience that we deliver to our travelers, to our customers. Um, so common pain points across all um, generations, all age groups that we surveyed. So I think more work for us to do um, on this front. Moving on to some technology um, themes. Um, so third trend that really kind of popped out of the, the survey results was that technologies influence my decisions. And in fact, the level of influence um, on my travel behaviors by technology is in fact growing. Two thirds of travelers in Europe today say that they're now actively considering whether an airline offers a good digital experience when they're making a booking. Nearly half do the same when they're choosing accommodation. So these figures are high, they're rising, um, up 13% um, since 2017. And they really show the critical kind of um, role that digital experiences play in the decision-making process when we're booking travel. 
Um, and I can understand this because I guess we rely on technology um, in so many parts of our life. Um, how we work, where we work from, a digital work experience, how we travel and the experience that we want when we travel for convenience and entertainment across all sectors, digital experience lies at the heart of our lives today. So understandably, delivering and offering a good digital experience is important in travel. And the data tells us that that good digital experience can literally be the difference between a traveler booking with you or booking with um, a competitor. Customers expect this as standard, um, but they should also, um, I think the data tells us we should also really strive to ensure that we deliver beyond the standard and we deliver to the level that our customers will expect, the type of digital experience they get through other sectors and other parts of their life. Social media, so a topic uh, we drilled into um, in, the, in the research. And what we saw was that in recent years, social media has become, of course, um, increasingly influential when it comes to shaping our travel choices. Um, this is, is because so much um, content today is on social, uh, so much of the content today on social media is travel related. Um, according to Adweek, 52% of Facebook users, in fact, are dreaming about holidays when they're online on Facebook in non-travel related um, kind of modes on Facebook. They're not planning a trip, but travel is on uh, our minds just so much. Uh, when we're researching a trip, 59% of travelers have reviewed videos and photos posted on social media, not by friends, but by the travel providers themselves. The figure is actually much, much higher outside of Europe, APAC, Middle East, and Africa. Um, that figure actually goes up to 90%. So still some way to go um, in Europe in terms of social media influence around our travel decisions. Um, Gen X or Gen Y, Gen Z um, travelers nearly always use um, social media content and from travel brands to inspire them and help them arrive at the right decision for uh, their purchase. I think one of the things that emerged quite strongly is that this isn't just um, content for research purposes is really driving um, decisions, travel decisions uh, by consumers today. <clears throat> Which are the um, most influential social media uh, channels? Um, the research tells us it's Facebook overall, looking at all um, age groups. Um, and by quite some way. This isn't the case for Gen Z uh, with this group of travelers in Europe. Uh, it's all about Instagram um, and by a fine uh, margin as well. 66% of Gen Z travelers feel Instagram carries the greatest influence over their travel choices. Um, this compares to just 13% of that group who use Facebook today, so absolutely on the decline with those younger groups, as we, as we know. Um, but um, uh, Gen Y also heavy users of Instagram, so I think quite a divide there. Facebook winning out overall in terms of level of influence, but with younger populations very much kind of tilting towards, um, towards in Instagram. Now seeing quite a demand um, around virtual and augmented um, reality helping guide the travel experience and the, the travel decision. Um, one third of travelers today uh, believe that augmented or virtual reality experiences would help them better plan their trips. And we're certainly seeing the emergence of um, much more content in this space and it being a much bigger play. Of course, with younger generations, um, they also uh, more significantly kind of expect virtual reality and augmented reality experiences to help them um, in, in their travel decisions. Um, though even one in five baby boomers say that they're up for it and plan on uh, being informed um, through AR and VR. Um, and I guess kind of the trend here is likely to go um, upwards significantly with uh, 14 million additional AR and VR devices expected to be sold this year alone. So um, the, 
the move of, uh, towards this being mainstream uh, and not just a novelty is certainly uh, well underway and I think an interesting opportunity for all of us to embrace um, in travel. The fourth and final trend is that um, technology makes travel easier to manage and I want more. Uh, we heard um, the story from Jonathan earlier about the experience he had coming from Venice Airport. And we certainly kind of see that frustrations come through from travelers um, strongly kind of vocalized in our research when um, the experience they expect just isn't delivered. It may sound obvious that in today's world, travelers do expect to be able to access booking information 24 seven on their smartphones and smartwatches. Uh, but 39% of our travelers in this research cite that this was one of the greatest experiences, the uh, greatest pains of their travel experience that they, uh, that they had through 2019. And this is up um, from 27 by, 2017 by 11% also. Um, breaking this down by age groups, you can imagine it's um, younger uh, age groups that express most frustration when they don't have that digital experience that they want. Um, and um, the experience there of um, those younger groups who are online more on their smartphone um, for a greater portion of their day uh, expect that experience to be seamless, expect that experience to match what they've um, got through, um, through other um, digital um, kind of channels. Travelers in Europe are also increasingly turning to voice search, um, a theme we'll be talking about later um, in uh, this conference. And they expect voice search to help them better manage their trips. One third have used the technology to help manage their travel. Um, Gen Y, uh, half of that population um, use voice search and 16% um, of Gen Z nearly always use voice search at some point in the travel uh, management um, uh, cycle. Um, as more and more voice search enabled devices come into our homes, uh, be that um, Google Home, Alexa, Siri, of course, um, we expect that this voice search trend to, of course, only grow. Um, and uh, I think the stats tell us that between 30 and 50 percent of all searches would be voice-enabled searches uh, by 2020. So um, quite um, a move towards this being um, even more pervasive. When using uh, voice search for travel, uh, most popular uses of voice search today are to request information related to weather or to live traffic updates. Uh, but as the range and the sophistication of requests to expand um, exponentially as more travel specific um, capabilities come in, we really um, expect kind of um, uh, a much greater um, level of uh, use cases to, to emerge. You'll um, hear later today about our Speak Now feature, um, uh, the Speak Now feature in, um, the, in EasyJet, uh, delivered by Travelport. Um, and this is, I think, a really super example of delivering a very frictionless experience to the traveler, taking the booking experience down to just seconds from up to 12 um, clicks, which um, is um, the case with the typical flight search um, uh, approach. It's not just about speed, though. I think the other interesting dimension of um, voice search is accessibility. Voice search makes um, travel booking um, easier to reach for populations with accessibility issues. But while technology has a significant role to play in meeting and exceeding the, the expectations of travelers in today's experience economy, uh, we also do need to recognize that it isn't always the answer, or not in isolation, um, at least. One third of travelers in Europe, for example, find not being able to speak to a human frustrating. The view is shared across all age groups, uh, more prevalent with baby boomers, as you'd expect. Um, but our strong, strong theme here of wanting that human touch, that human connection to help us um, through, um, through our travel booking. 
so what does um, what are the takeaways? What are um, what does this mean to all of us in the travel industry? For me, there are three um, you know big takeaways that we need to take back to our offices. So let's um, chat through those. Um, first one is around younger generations being more demanding and really wanting change now. Gen Y and Gen Z are more frustrated by current offerings than Gen X and baby boomers. They demand innovative new solutions um, and they are also less loyal, less predictable. So high demands that need to be met in order to have that population as a core part of our businesses going forward. Second theme is around the use of emerging technologies and channels appearing to be nearing a tipping point. Demand for voice search as well as augmented and virtual reality is now significant among uh, the travelers we surveyed. Um, also, interestingly, their comfort with sharing data is also increasing. And of course, channels like social media are opening up, opening up new opportunities for us to land bookings in that social media journey. But we can't forget the importance of people as well. Uh, younger generations are increasingly turning to travel professionals to help them create the holiday of their dreams. And there are some things today, at least, that technology is not best placed um, to serve. So the solution is man and machine working well together to deliver a great travel experience to the customer. Thank you, everyone.